Welcome to the DV12 podcast. What's up out there? Once again, it is out of bird day sitting here with Prince Mazzani for another episode of the V12 podcast. Appreciate you joining us today. We are joined by a guest, an activist, an entrepreneur, uh, the founder and CEO of the nonprofit organization Building Better Communities. Mr. Perry Bradley, welcome to the B12 Podcast, well, man. Well, 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 thank you for having right. me here. Yeah, no problem, man. I appreciate you coming. So, um, Building uh, Better Communities, uh, that is a nonprofit organization uh, geared towards what? So it's geared towards actually um, bridging that gap between our community and local law enforcement. We've also expanded it to like elected officials, mm. things that are going to help us as a race and as a community grow and become better and more efficient. How'd you get involved in that? Like, What made you decide to eat that that's kind of the mission you wanted to take in life? Well, to be honest with you, man, I've always been, been like a pledge of fraternity cap off the side. So I've always been always given. Okay. But then um, not too long after that, when I got to Columbia, my cousin, Devin Taylor, was gunned down by a state trooper in Sumter. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, you know, unarmed, traffic stop. You know, they flipped it to make it seem like, you know, it was his fault. But, you know, you got an unarmed black man back in the day when cops were doing that for real. And he was gunned down and killed. Mm. And so um, I really started looking into it and how we could get it. I, I actually um, got in touch with Sheriff Lott. We got on Lott. We got on Lott. We got on Lott. And that has changed my life. Just basically on how I see everything and what I see. You know, in order to help our people in our community, there are rules to, you know, just everyday survival that is different for us than it is for most people. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that, but the face reality, that's what it is. You know, you know, as as us, as a black male, you know, you jump out your car in a traffic stop, you might get shot. Right. That you might know, be we see that. that might be that. We see many white females, white guys jump out fussing at the cop and right. they go home. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to teach our people like, hold up, we can't fight tickets on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. We have to fight tickets in court. In court. And that's the biggest thing we started doing and it just went from there. As soon as we got into it, we just started seeing more and more how much more stuff in the community is needed. Right. that we had to learn just to play the game. So do you think we'll ever get to a point where we don't have to tell our children the police talk? Where we tell our children, hey, when the police pull you over, you got to do X, Y, Z. That talk that other communities don't have to tell their children. Do you think we'll ever get to a point like but that? I really don't know, man. You know, but we got to keep trying. Right. You know, that's the biggest part of my organization. I'll be a hypocrite if I say, no, we never get there. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I'm shooting for. Right. I want to get to that point where we don't have to have that talk, where everybody's going to be treated equal, that we get treated the same way other counterparts get treated. Right. But at the same time, it's a process. It takes a little bit and a little bit and a little yeah. bit at a time. I mean, it's, are we not there yet? Right. Yeah. You know, I I think, uh, go ahead. Not to cut you up. I think um, having those conversations with the children still is good because sometimes and I'm playing devil advocate here, but sometimes we be the problem. Like when I was 18, I had a BMW. You couldn't tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. a cop pulled me over. I knew my tickets and I knew my tags and my registration and all that was legit. But he pulled me over probably because he stereotyped me. I was young, black, and a BMW. And uh, I automatically had an attitude. I was the aggressor. So having those conversations with your children can teach them, you know, like, hey, when somebody pull you over, still be respectful, still be polite. You know what I'm saying? Still handle yourself accordingly so it won't escalate. You know what I'm saying? Because you couldn't tell me nothing when I was 18 and I had my BMW. I was I was riding around with a chip on my shoulder like, I dare cop pull me over. So with all these videos that's out now, because you know, with, with, with social media and you know the, the, the climate that we're in right now, everybody is recording the police. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna be honest with you, with all of these police encounters of, of, of people recording and talking cash, trash to the police, I really can't wait till I get pulled over and I know everything is legit. Because I'm going to talk cash to the police. You pull me over and my tags, my license, and everything is good. Um, and, and that's because you know they, they get away with it. They can do it. So why can't we do it? Why should we be living in fear of, of, of being a, a victim of police gun violence or uh, have to act any different? You see what I'm saying? Man, I see what you're saying. One of the biggest things I tell people all the time is think about it like this. If you do act like that, yeah, who's gonna tell your story? Mm. Right. Think about it for a second. Now. Right. If you, if you get shot on the side of the road, like we never know what really happened with my cousin Devin, mm. because one of the biggest things we had to deal with was the fact that 
even though state troopers had the camera on the, the dash cam, mm -hmm. they don't have to wear body cameras. Mm -hmm. So all you heard was the struggle, and he said what he wanted to say about what Devin may have done, but we don't know. Devin's mm -hmm. not here to tell the story. Yeah, right. You know that rule thing. You know, hey, I'd rather be judged by um, 12 than carried by, by six. six. Yeah. So right. that's the biggest thing. What are you willing to do to make it home? And even not even with police, think about this society, man. The more we pop off and we show attitude on the least a little bit of things, right. guess what? That's your chance of you know, getting shot or not worse, making home, right? not making it home. So we have to learn to maybe accept some things. You know, I watched, um, who was it? I want to say it was Craig Mack. He was talking about the 84,000 seconds of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, if somebody takes 60 seconds of your day, are you willing to risk the other 83,460? Mm. So that, that was the biggest thing. Are you That's willing deep. to risk the rest of your day or the rest of your life mm. on a mistake? Right. Sometimes you got to let stuff go. Right. It ain't about being soft. It ain't about being a punk. It ain't about being any of that. It just, you know, sometimes pride is not really pride. It's just you learning to be the bigger man. Right. So do y'all do y'all deal with, um, like, youth in the community, like the gangs and, you know, the, 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 the people in the community that, I guess, would have influence, but not necessarily be on the right side of the law and in, in, in your um, efforts to bridge the gap between the communities and the police? That's the only way it's gonna work, man. That's the only way it's gonna work. Like we, you know, we know that there are other organizations out there and mm -hmm. they do great jobs. You have um, Gangs and Peace, they doing their thing, you know. But at the same time, we have a lot of young men that, you know, come to us. They come, you know, low-key, don't want people to know it's them, but, right. you know, they come to us and we talk to them, or their parent may bring them to us to talk to them. So we don't turn our backs on anybody because everybody needs help. You know, conflict resolution is something we all can, you know, take a couple lessons in. Mm -hmm. We deal with it all the time. Right. I mean, and we all slip, you know. I mean, I'll be honest, I've slipped before. Right. You know, I'm a grown slip. man. Yeah. People come out calling you Uncle Tom or Sambo and stuff like that. Right. The man, he be wanting so to slap the shit out of you. Do you got to slap the shit out of somebody? The man, you know, that, you know that at the same time, you be like, nah, because that's not what I teach. That's right. not what I'm about. You so know? do you get people calling you Sambo and Uncle oh, Tom just God. because of I'm your... I'm lost boy, just because I try to bridge that gap. Mm. But see, people understand. You want to make a difference in life, but you don't want to take the steps to do it. Right. I sit on the Richland County Chef Department's Advisory Board. I sit proudly on that board mm -hmm. because I go to the hiring board. I see and interview the individuals that are trying to work in our communities. Mm. If I don't see something I like, I don't vote on it. Right. And that's, we need more people like that doing just that because you can't sit around running off at the mouth and not wanting to do anything about it. And you've got many ways to help your community. That's just the way I choose. Mm -hmm. But don't criticize me because that's the way I go. So right. you've, you've received that type of criticism. Oh man, my awesome. God! Yeah, so I'm not gonna lie. I, I've heard of a couple of community, uh, a couple of different um, organizations. Have you heard of Better Communities and Families (BCF)? Uh huh. Um, they here? Yeah, they were kind of out of here. Um, it was a, a a a red B, a blue C, and a black F. Okay. It stood for building. Uh, communities and families, but also blood crip folks, okay. and it was kind of like a gang, similar to Gangs in Peace, which okay. I also heard of. Yeah. Have you ever been affiliated with Gangs in Peace? Or, I know you haven't done the other one, but have you been affiliated with them at all? No, I haven't. I reached out to them uh, when they were with the pastor, and he just said, you know, they want to do their own thing. They're just so like more power to them. But we still open our doors to any and everybody. Okay. So we're willing to work with anybody. We don't have no problems with right. that. I think. That thing, what they're doing is, is exceptional work because you got to think it's hard when you can people call you the monster mm -hmm. but then you can show them the softer side of you and you can show them that you really care right, right you know people thought about the black panthers as that that was the worst organization ever but what did they do they were feeding people in the communities they were teaching them how to read they were doing a lot of good things in society mm -hmm. you know you think about dr king people weren't he wasn't a big he didn't have a high um acceptance rate when he was here Mm -hmm. Now you can't say nothing, you know, Dr. King is the man. He had a right. holiday after marathon, but when he was on earth, you know, people hated him. Right. You know, they didn't like him for what he did, but then they could start seeing his message and his vision, and it works. Right. You know, people look at nonviolence as a sign of weakness, mm -hmm. and it's not a sign of weakness. Right. It's, it's a lot stronger to take what people have to say about you and just eat that up and keep going on your day. Mm. You think about that. It's it's easy for you. I mean, we, we guys, we strong. It's easy for somebody to say, call us a name and let's slap the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. right. that's, that's easy. Right. Because that's that's how we bred, to be honest with you. 
That's how I came up, man. I got bruises on my knuckles now. I used to fight. Mm. I used to do that, but I don't do that anymore. I'm not gonna say that, but I choose not to do that right now. You know, now, if I have to, I have to. But I got to defend myself. But that's not my first line of defense now. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you start changing that mindset, mm-hmm. that's where you gotta be at. Just like even with the police, you said you waiting on somebody to pull you over. Yeah, I'm not, to, I ain't trying to get shot or nothing. But I mean, yeah. you ain't about to. Uh, you know, you're not about to pull me over and give me the okie doke. Right? But there, there are ways to do it, though. Yeah. You know, they, they, we teach that. You know, we actually have a class where we actually teach people how to conduct yourself during a traffic stop. Mm-hmm. Man, you know the rules. There are certain things. Like, for instance, people all the time, they want to search your car. You, Everybody sees that. You know the rules mm-hmm. of that. If you ain't doing nothing, they're playing nothing on you. Right. That's just too easy. But, you know, all the time, when you get pulled over, you may not realize it. You're not getting pulled over for tags. You're not getting pulled over for little things that what you're thinking you get pulled over. So hit the cop out. Why did you stop me? Once he explains why he stopped, you go from there. Mm-hmm. If it ain't something you feel like you're going to be able to win on the side of the road, hey, get my ticket, go about your day. Mm-hmm. And that's it. They don't have to search your car. You don't have to get out and do none of that. Now, you give them probable cause, Right. that's on you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, A lot of us ride around. I got a lot of guys that I've helped, and we've actually helped them. I mean, literally get them out of trouble where they've had weed or something in the console. You know, because people smoke. Like I said, if you sit here and act like you don't know what people do, then you stupid. Exactly. Right. I'm not stupid. Right. I know you got guys that ride around smoking dope. I'm not saying they sell it, but they smoking. So they got a roach or something in the car. That's no reason. Man. That's normally for for an average person a ticket. Yeah. That's not you going to jail. Mm-hmm. You know, you got something and you telling the cop the truth. That's easy. You right. got a weapon in the car. I, we, we have CWP classes. That's why I said we try to build better communities. We try to do everything we can to help you not get in trouble. Mm. So well, my thing well, is, if you want to carry a gun, it's fine. Carry it the right way. Get your credentials right. Get the training and everything you need. We don't mind you carrying a gun. That's on you because you need it. So with the CWP classes, right, real quick, South Carolina is like an open carry state now, correct? Only if you have yeah, your CWP. Only if you got your CWP. Oh, yeah. So if you get caught in a car with a gun in the glove compartment. You no, know, in the glove in the glove compartment, fine. it's fine. Okay. If, as long as they have something with an integral fastener. So it can be in the center console, mm-hmm. completely loaded with one in the head, or it can be in the um, glove box. As long as the glove box closes and you have to like press a button or pull something yeah, to two open. Two steps. It. That's, That's fine. The integral fastener. Now yeah. CWP is you gotta like if you outside in public, you need that CWP to have your gun on you. Nah, CWP means that if you could be sitting in your car, if you can pull it over, it could be in your lap. Mm. Yep. It could be on your seat. It could be but, anyway. it could be on your body. Right. You just gotta let the cop know you have a CWP and the gun is on you. Right. Mm. Cause you don't want him making no mistakes. Right. Right. But you're right. You can have it out there. Now what they do, what they've added extra and to me I hate it because it's more of an intimidation factor and law enforcement can't really check it, is that it allows you, if you have a CWP, to open carry. Hmm. Open carry means that you can go around in grocery stores, around kids and everything, with a gun on your hip, right. with, a, with a, a bad holster hanging out your waistband. I mean, no safety features whatsoever. Hmm. That's not cool. And then also, how do you know if that person really had the CWP unless you go up and approach them? Right. How many guys you know, well, cops, they, cops can't even do it. They're not supposed to. But I talked a lot. I was like, man, shit, I'm going to do it anyway because it's not right. You know, how many guys actually know you go up and say, hey, man, you got CWP? Mm-hmm. You risk yourself, you know, in danger, whatever. Or what if somebody trying to be a badass, roll up and, and snatch your gun out your holster, which it doesn't have a safety lock on. Mm-hmm. Right. Then you get shot with your own gun. Mm-hmm. Or your gun drop out your waistband and go off. Mm-hmm. There's so many issues with open carry that I just don't approve of. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, if you say that, most people say, oh, man, you don't like guns. I own guns. Right. I'm not going to say in front. I mm-hmm. carry a gun every day. Right. But my thing is, my only problem I have with that is I don't try to intimidate people. I don't need to have a gun on my hip where you can see it. So I'm trying to make you feel some kind of way. Right, right. Guns are intimidating. And people don't understand that. And I'll be honest with you, it's not us that's carrying the open carry most of the time. Yeah. I'm just being honest right, with right, you. Right. So, um, in addition to the work that you do with, um, you know, training, you know, us how to interact with the with police and different ways to carry ourselves, with you being um, affiliated to with LOT, um, are there any programs or anything that's going on to kind of do any type of police reform or how they interact oh, with us? Yeah. Because, like you said. A lot of times we might get pulled over for a tag, but that's not what they're pulling us over for. Or we might get pulled over for an improper lane change, but it might just be because they're looking for drugs and they might have profiled to see 
a car that they think might have drugs. So they just watch them a little bit more closely to find the smallest little thing just to pull them over for it so they can check and see if they have drugs. And to me, it's, it's legal to do that, but it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because it could be a person, a regular person like 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 Mazzani mm -hmm. in a BMW, black man, 18, 19 years old in a BMW. They looking for drugs. They see him. They think he got drugs. So they follow him until he doesn't put his turn signal on for one turn within 100 feet. He put it on within 80 feet, but it wasn't 100 feet. So now they pull him over, which gives them the probable cause to harass and hassle him, whether he has guns and drugs or not. You know what I'm saying? But they only give them cause to be a ticket. Right. Exactly, but it's still, it. they'll give they don't give you call for them to search your car. Mm -hmm. But they'll find any they'll find any reason. Well, they, they about, they, if they, they smell, intimidate if they smell weed in your car, that's a probable cause. Mm -hmm. If they see the rope in your car, that's a probable cause. You know, so little things like that tip all the time. Those are things you need to be careful of, and that's it. But I will tell you that back to your question. Yes, I don't see. It's not one. I've been mean, talking earlier. It's not a one way street. Mm -hmm. I don't just go out to the community and teach them how. They need to deal with officers. Mm -hmm. I also teach officers how they need to deal mm -hmm. with their community. Right. Yeah. You know, that's the reason why I joined the Citizens Advisory Board. Mm -hmm. Any complaint that an individual has in the community, they can come to me and I take it to the Sheriff's Department. Uh, also with Police to Peace, but think about it. Did you see the whole article where the Sheriff's Department changed the back of their cars and the back of their uniforms to say peace officers? Peace officers. Mm -hmm. that I noticed that happened. That, that was Police to Peace. I was oh. right there. Go to the interview. I was right there. I also, when I was in L.A., I talked about those same things. Police to peace. I even went to Orangeburg. You know, the places where we are seeing a lot of crime and a lot of stuff, we also have to teach officers we are not animals. You mm -hmm. have to treat us like we're individuals. Mm -hmm. So it go both ways. It ain't just me going to the community saying, you need to do this. It's me also working with law enforcement saying, hey, you need to do this. Yeah. So it got to go both ways, but you need more people stepping up, yelling and screaming, don't get you nowhere. Right. You ever yelled at a woman that got her to do something for you? Nope. No. All right then. So why do you think it's gonna happen with anybody else? Right, right. Come on, man. That's a, usually that's the way to get her to do the opposite of what yeah, you want. Get you smacked. Being, being <laughs> smart, being educated, being informed on how to move will get you further. Yes. Right. And that's what y'all teach to the police and to the community. And to the community. Got you. Got you. Because I tell the police officers all the time: when you walk up into a community, if you got an attitude with somebody, and you walk up to their car. They gonna catch that vibe. Right. We're not stupid. Right. We know when somebody like you said, you know when somebody's profiling you, you know when somebody's just messing with you, when you know you ain't doing nothing wrong. You're not dumb. It's not like you're gonna say, did I really do that? Right. No, I didn't do that. Okay, well, all right, give me a ticket. No, but we know what it is when you come to us with an attitude. Now when you're respectful and you treat us like respect, mm -hmm. we give it back to you most times. Think about it. Now that's right. any individual. If I come off of you, and I'm mean mother than you and I just something and I, the first thing I say to you, how are you gonna react to me? Not mm -hmm. good. Not in the way that you want me to. Yeah, but we yeah. took my hand out to give you a shake, what up? Say, what's up, man? You good? And good. we talk, that's cool. Now it's a mutual understanding. That was a mutual understanding. It go both ways in society. Because at the end of the day, I look at it like this. Police officers are just people from the community also. They mm -hmm. live here. They they go home every day into somebody's community. So why aren't we treating them the same? Why aren't they treating us the same? Right. You, do you think you ever want want to get into politics? <laughs> nah, I don't want to get into Cause, politics. Because when I was, I'm not gonna lie, man. When I when I was looking at um you know some of your information before you came and stuff like that, I was looking at uh you know your pictures that you were taking with different um figures of the community with different events that y'all throw, and it kind of struck me as 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 like you might could make that transition into politics. Do you think that would help further your cause, or is it? I, I, I think it would hurt about? us, man. I think it would hurt me. Because I can't, so this is the thing, when you get into politics, you, you are kind of married to whatever politics you got. Mm -hmm. So whatever person you, you got into that office with, I think you're kind of married to that person and that idea. Mm -hmm. We don't have an idea we're married to. We can deal with everybody. And I don't want to be kind of, you know, pinned down to one belief or one thing. Like, for instance, um, if you sit in city council or something like that and, and there's something that they're voting on and you have to go against the vote, let's say they vote four to three and you're part of that three, but guess what? I still have to go with what the four voted on. Mm. You know, we got to think, I just got in the paper, um, I think it was Halloween, and I had some people call me and they offered me to do stuff and I said, nah, I'm not good, I'm good with that because my politics, because there was some couple elections coming up. But my thing is, I like, I believe we need politicians. Mm -hmm. But we need somebody to hold them accountable. Right. You can't hold other politicians accountable if you're sitting at the same table with them. Mm -hmm. right. When you're outside in the community and you see what the community wants, what's happening, 
you can say, hold on, you said you were going to do this, right? but you didn't do it. It's good you so say you, that. You got you to hold, you you have people out there to hold them accountable. You know, somebody once told me it's better to be the king maker mm -hmm. than the king. Mm. Right. Because the people hold the power. The people Even hold the power. Even in the Constitution, the first line, we the people. You know what I'm saying? So everything goes to the people. But if the people don't be active and voice their opinion or get out there and vote or get out there and go to these, uh, what you said, you sit down and you'll be able to pick the police on the police board. If we don't go to these things, then we don't know the officers that's being hired in our communities. We can't, you know, fully see how their attitude is, how they treat the people of our complexion, and it becomes a problem. So when we run into the traffic, yeah, they judging us or they stereotyping us. But if we did our part, we would be able to have hands on on who we pick in our community. Yeah. And I think that's really important. I think it's important too. And I also think that from what you said, from a standpoint of trying to stay out of the politic, like being a politician, part of it keeps it more authentic. And, um, you know, it keeps your motives clear because like I said man like and like you told me you know from from outside perspectives looking in a person might look at what you know the people that you take pictures with and do different things with and they might call you Uncle Tom or or say um that the motives are are, are maybe not as 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 uh as genuine as, as they say as a matter of fact I actually um um I, I spoke with some uh of the people from the organization Gangs in Peace and they're doing pretty good moves as well but I mean I don't know what the incident was or what happened but uh, they seem to get the impression that they were the people that were being spoken to about an event and they kind of brought the brought everything together and then turned around and said that when it came time for someone to get the credit for it they ended up giving the credit to you um, uh, so, yeah, I've so, never been in an event with them yeah, that, 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 that's that's kind of how they said. I mean, if but that's so, how, but that, but that's how. I'll be honest with you, that's how things happen all the time. Yeah, if you don't know the truth, or if you don't talk to the individual, what happened, you don't know why somebody gave credit, for, and you don't know what happened. Yeah, you no, know, and I'll be honest with you, I got a grant. Yeah, but I got a grant because we've been here thirteen years. Mm -hmm. They apply for a grant of being here too much. It don't work that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you right now. So you you got to put in your time. I'm not saying that's what's wrong. Yeah, but I'm just saying they're implying it like basically that they got that that it was their leg work and the credit went to you. Nah, bro, I've been here 13 plus years. They just started. Mm -hmm. So just to put it out there, that's in life. If you don't put it in the work, who's gonna who's gonna support you? Yeah, everybody pop up. You have so many different organizations that pop up and don't make it. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. but we've been here 13 years, mm -hmm. still doing the same things we've been doing. Nobody put in no legwork for us. We put in all our legwork. Now, do I wish them the best? Would I work with them? Yes. Yeah, I was about to ask you. Would you feel yourself working with them in the future? Man, I got no problem with nobody. Yeah, I, like yeah, I yeah. said before, I can't tell you and sit here and say, "Hey, BBC is making better communities." If I can't work with anybody, right. I don't right. care what people say about me. I don't mm. care how people feel. But if you came to me and talked to me, maybe you find out what the real answer is. Mm. Right. I ain't never hired a shine from nobody. Right. And I don't take nobody else a shine. Right. That's that's one thing we don't do. Right. Everything we've done, you can Google and see. We've done it. We've been doing it for years. Right. So for organizations say, hey, we took that shine now. Now we did get money, but we got money after being here for 13 years. After me coming out of my pocket thousands and thousands of dollars mm. of my own money, finally got a little bit of retribution back. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that's just something we do. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing. I'm not going to be shameful. I don't know. I'm I mean, not going to be shamed for it. And we were talking about camera. Person. We were talking off camera, and I, you know, I don't, I don't know if you wanted to. Uh, Kind of bring this up, but you told me something that about about uh, something that you've been through that hit home uh, yeah, right. to me. You know, I, I like I, I've been affected by gun violence myself. My son, um, because of uh, a gun that was improperly stored uh, by an adult who left that gun around my son, he ended up picking up the gun and he shot himself in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, two years ago, bullet went through. He tried. I guess he tried to put it in his waistband. And it, and went it, it went through his stomach right here. Came out right here at ten years old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was the craziest, worst, most frightening day of my life. And uh, you said you had a similar experience. So the same thing. I had an uncle that um, that liked to drink. Mm -hmm. Left a loaded a revolver on the table. Mm -hmm. At the time, I'm a kid. I like playing with guns. I was curious. I picked up the gun. The gun went off. Luckily for me. I had put my hands up when the, when the gun went off. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. I don't know how these kids do it today, but hearing a gun go off and feeling that burn is one of the worst 
things ever. Mm. It's one of the scary. I had nightmares for years. So I'm gonna tell you something. It's not even just the injury. It's the trauma that is left behind. Mm -hmm. But that's what led me to really focus on gun violence. Mm. So you know, I've seen it. I I've seen it a lot. You know, my brother was um, you know, locked up for ten years. A lot of people don't know this about me. Like I didn't always start out in the community being the good guy. Yeah. I dealt with the bad guys. I've hung with the bad guys. I've seen a lot of stuff. I worked in a nightclub. Look, that's how I'm all know me. You know that we worked in nightclubs together and I've seen brothers bring guns in and, and people getting shot and everything else and never did nothing about it. Yeah. It was to me that wasn't my issue. That wasn't my concern. But then when God hit this on me, mm -hmm. that was something we had to do. So I tell anybody, man, when God gives you your purpose and you actually see it, you yeah. gotta do it. it no matter what people say about you, what people feel about you, that's your blessing, you need to do it. Right. And I think when I was able to embrace all of that, that's when God started blessing me. But this is something you cannot do in like a few months. This is something you gotta put the work in for years. You gotta put the pain in. You gotta put work. the pain and suffering. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta do it all. You gotta endure all the bad with the good. And you gotta understand that no matter how much good you do, you may only see that much progress at a time. Mm -hmm. But you got to take it inch by inch by inch. Right. And if it's something that you really want to do, you're not looking for the reward. You're doing the work that was set out for you to do. Right. Man, yeah. grand or no grand. Right, right. Grand or no grand. Yeah. BBC will still be there. Mm -hmm. BBC has still been doing everything we've been doing with no money. We just got money. Matter of fact, we didn't even got the money yet. Yeah. We just got awarded a grant this year. But I want you to go online and look at what we've been doing. Yeah. Ain't nobody help us do that. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody gave us no leeway for that. We did that. We bust our ass to do that. Right, right. I salute you, man. As a father of a teenage child and, you know, other kids is coming up, going to be teenage children living in this community, it really makes me feel good to have somebody that's doing something like that. And um, I really salute you and the work that you're doing, and I hope that it that it continues on, man. Um, for anybody out there who wanted to, uh, you know, if they want to reach out to you or if they want to uh, become a part of it or just help out or just see what you got going, uh, that maybe they want to bring their children involved or just anything, how would someone get in contact with you or where, where can they go to, to, to see what you got going on? Well, I'm going to say one thing first. I'm going to say if it wasn't for guys like you guys mm -hmm. bringing the word to the people, mm -hmm. it would never get out. Mm -hmm. White stream media is not going to put this stuff out in our exactly. community. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys, first of all. But they want to reach out to us. Our phone number 803 908 7775. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's 803 908 7775 or our website www.bbconline.org. And that's been paid for and done for for 13 plus years. Yeah. So now it's time to get some payback. Right. I'm I see. I see that you had a, a youth gun violence event. Every year we put okay. on a gun violence And how are those events? Man, they are beautiful, man. Is, beautiful. It, is it more people, like our people come out to the events or do other races and ethnic groups come out as so well? So I'm gonna tell you what I'm disappointed about. Our people, the ones that we really need to touch and really need to get to, don't support it as much as the people who know the problems. Mm. People who know, and other people, like a lot of different races and everything come out and support us. But the ones I want to see, the ones I want to see are mm -hmm. our people, our kids. I want us there because we're the ones that are dying in the streets. Mm -hmm. You're right, man. And rotting in the jails. Okay. So that's a that's a call to all the dope boys, all the, uh, the hustlers, all the uh, gang leaders, everybody, man. Get your peoples involved. Um, we got people out here that's putting that work in, that groundwork to try to bridge that gap between uh, the communities and the police. Perry Bradley, man, I appreciate you coming hey, appreciate on, man, to the Detail Podcast. Doing the work, man. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it. You guys. I appreciate y'all turning it, tuning in too, man. It's the Bird Daddy, Prince Mazzani, Perry Bradley. We out. B12 Podcast. We out. Yeah. V12 Studios. The pros. We are the city. V12 the label.